Hey guys, welcome back to our video series on chemical evolution and the origin of life on this planet. Just a quick reminder, what we covered in the first video was essentially atoms and molecules. We also covered the atomic structure of molecules and how chemical reactions happen, and then we got into water and how water is a cohesive and adhesive molecule. We talked about its incredible surface tension properties and the fact that it's denser as a liquid than as a solid, which allowed our oceans to form in the beginning of time. And remember that the oceans were literally like a scientific laboratory for life to begin. All of the different reactions, all of those chemicals and molecules that were reacting together to begin life happened in our oceans. So if our oceans were frozen, this never would have happened and life may never have began on this planet. So that's a very, very important property of water. And now we can move on to finish the last few properties. Let's begin. So the fifth property that I wanted to talk about is water's very high capacity for absorbing energy. If you recall the atomic structure of water, it contains an oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. These hydrogen atoms undergo what's called hydrogen bonding between other molecules. So the water molecules are all binding, are bonding with each other through hydrogen bonding. And these bonds are difficult to break. It takes a lot of energy to break these bonds, which is why it takes a lot of heat to boil water and change it from a liquid to a gas. Water's high heat of vaporization is the reason why sweating cools us off. Physiologically, sweating is very important and we can also douse ourselves and pour some water on us because water has the ability to absorb all of that heat from the sun so it doesn't heat up our body. It's essentially acting as a barrier and it absorbs all of that energy and it takes a while before the water evaporates away. So water is extremely important for keeping us cool throughout the day. From a chemical evolution standpoint, once all of these chemicals were forming in our ocean, the water was actually protecting them the entire time from the intense sun and the intense heat from the atmosphere. So the chemicals were able to stay in the water. They were able to stay in solution without being destroyed or harmed by the high intensity of heat from the incoming atmosphere. So they were able to persist and increase in concentrations. And this most likely allowed chemical evolution to begin. The last important property of water is that it has the unique ability to act as both an acid and a base in solution because it dissociates, it breaks apart into a hydrogen proton and an OH molecule, which is known as hydroxide. The reason why this is so important for your body is because of pH. Now you remember pH is due to differences in proton concentrations and cells in our body are very, very sensitive to pH changes. So water plays a very important role in helping maintain homeostasis within, within our bodies by participating actively in acid base reactions that maintain our body's pH at an optimal level so our cells can function efficiently. Now, from a chemical evolution standpoint, we now know that the water that filled our earliest oceans provided a very optimal environment for early chemical reactions to occur. And these would have occurred in deep sea vents at the very bottom of the ocean where the sea floor was contacting Earth's extremely hot interior that ignited these reactions. In addition to sea floors, the atmosphere around the earth, which was dominated by volcanic gases, was a very likely environment for these early chemical reactions to occur as well. But for these chemical reactions occur, to occur, there needed to be a lot of energy to activate these early reactions. The reactions simply couldn't occur spontaneously. They needed activation from a lot of energy, and they got that from the sun. Now, most people, when they think of this sun, they think of that giant ball in the sky that's extremely hard to look at, painful to look at, but brings heat to this planet. The sun emits energy in what's called photons, and these high-energy photons reach the Earth's surface. But today, our ozone layer absorbs a lot of this high-intensity radiation, and protects us from it. But when the Earth was first forming in ancient times, most likely this ozone layer didn't exist. Instead, 
the atmosphere was filled with a lot of volcanic gases, which allowed a very, very large amount of high energy photons to bombard this planet. And this allowed the chemical evolution to begin because it ignited the reactions. Now, how do high intensity photons from the sun cause chemical reactions to begin? What's amazing about photons from light energy from the sun is that they have the ability to break apart molecules and create what's known as free radicals. Free radicals are essentially atoms with unpaired electrons in their outer shell, meaning they're very highly reactive. So in the atmosphere, you are having these free radicals being created and causing new types of chemicals such as formaldehyde and hydrogen, hydrogen cyanide to form in the atmosphere. The same principle was happening in the ocean in the deep sea vents mentioned before. These deep sea vents, because they were in contact with such hot volcanic heat from the Earth's internal core, it had enough energy to propel the same types of reactions from below. So from above into from the atmosphere and below in the ocean, you had very similar reactions most likely happening where chemical evolution was finally able to take off. The beautiful concept surrounding this entire process, everything that was happening above the Earth and below in our oceans, was the fact that sunlight, the energy from the sun, was being used to form new chemicals here on Earth. And these chemicals held what's called chemical energy. So sun energy was being converted to chemical energy. And this type and this form of energy transformation is what allowed chemical evolution to really begin and what propelled early, early molecules and life on this planet to arise. We can't end this video on just water. We have to talk about the most versatile atom on our planet, and that is carbon. Carbon is in almost every living organism on this planet. That's why scientists call life essentially a carbon-based phenomenon. And carbon is so versatile because its molecular shape allows it to create so many different types of bonds, which creates so many different molecules and has allowed such a versatile and diverse form of species of life to form on this planet. Once carbon containing molecules with all of these different functional groups attached to them, meaning so many different types of simple and complex molecules began to form on this planet, what happened next? Well, these were the essential building blocks. These were the very early molecules that eventually arose to what we know as our DNA, to proteins, to sugars, and also to fats. Let's just say as a whole, we owe a lot to water and to the atom known as carbon. I wanna end this video series by summarizing all of this information and all of these concepts into one very simple idea. And that is that everything that we're made out of, all of the atoms inside of us, they all started billions of years ago within our atmosphere and deep within our oceans. And that is the crazy thing about the origin of life and chemical evolution as a whole, that it started out with such simple elements. And eventually we now have, through so many rounds of chemical evolution over billions of years, such diverse and incredible life on this planet. And that is the beauty of all of this. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this two-part series. We hope you guys learned a lot about the origin of life and also about chemical evolution. We'll see you next time on StepStream.